I've showed you this before, and I actually think this is a pretty good schematic representation of what's meant by dacite. And this is a complicated little diagram, although it, the diagram itself is quite simple, but it, 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 it makes, it, it's predicated on the following assumptions, is that you need to narrow down your world. And what you're doing is narrowing it down from, let's say, an infinite set of possibilities to a finite set of manageable possibilities. And you do that a bunch of ways, partly merely you can't, your senses aren't acute enough to detect everything. So pure stupidity, in some sense, stops you from being absolutely overwhelmed. You don't have eyes in the back of your head, for example, so you don't have to worry about all those things you're not looking at behind you. But then, it's far more than that. You, you just can't handle that full complexity, so there's a continual narrowing process. And then you exist inside that narrowed reality. Like, if I look at you like that, there's not a hell of a lot of difference between that and looking at you like that. Like, I can't really see these people. I can tell they're people. That's all. I can see your face. I've got just about all of it right there. So, that's a very narrow, and you know, you're moving your eyes around and inhabiting this constant narrow space. Well, what, what's that space, what does that space you inhabit consist of? Well, that's Dasein, that space that you inhabit. And so we could say, it's something like this. You have implicit in that perception a sense of where you are and what you're doing right now. It's in the perception. And then, in the perception as well is what you're aiming at. Because you're not just sitting here passively, or you'd be asleep, or you'd be unconscious. You're sitting here, doing nothing, you know, physically, but you have an aim in mind, and the aim is what you're pointing your eyes at. The aim is what's structuring your perceptions. The aim is what's revealing that part of the world that, that is being revealed to you, to you. That's the revelation of the world. It also structures your emotions. It also primes your behaviors. So it's not a drive. It's not a goal. It's not a, it's not a motivation. It's, 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 it's more than that. It's all of that at once. That's sort of what your personality is. But you see, the phenomenologists don't really think about personality. They think about the manifestation of your reality. It's not exactly your personality. It's that you're the center of a reality. And you, you constitute that reality. But all your elements of experience constitute that reality. And so it's something like, it's simple, its element is something like where you are, where you're going, and the embodied actions you undertake to relate those two things, which would include your eye movements, because of course, perception is an active phenomena. You are shaking your eyes back and forth unbelievably rapidly. Otherwise, if you can, if you can make your eyes stand still, which you can do with great concentration, everything will black out because you have to move your eyes back and forth so that the light hits different cells because the cells get um, exhausted and then they stop reporting. So you're just whipping your eyes back and forth in, in a micro, micro way constantly and as well as moving them around voluntarily and involuntarily. So even perception is, perception is a lot more like feeling things out with your fingers even when you're using your ears or your eyes. It's very active, there's no passive perception. It's a motor act to perceive. And so that motor act is determined by your hierarchy of values. That's one way of looking at it. So another way of thinking about it, that's also how the past and the future are implicit in it. Your very active perception is determined by your entire value structure. So it, it's implicit inside of it. It's folded up inside of it. You can tell that too, because if something violates it, again, maybe an argument with someone, because people are, it's good to think about people as the thing you interact with the most, as, as the canonical object, because they're so damn complicated, and they get in the way all the time. And when someone gets in the way of what you're doing, you know, it isn't obvious what they're interfering with. It might be the little micro-routine that you're undertaking right now. You know, maybe you go home and you make a nice dinner, and the person you're making it for is all rude about it. Okay, so what exactly are they getting in the way of? Well, they're certainly getting the w in the way of your expectations of having a nice emotional time for the next hour. But you have no idea how indicative that is of some serious flaw in you or them or the relationship or the situation or the way you've conducted your whole life or the way they've conducted their whole life. And all of that's packed in there. It's sort of like the unconscious of the psychoanalysts. But it's more, it's more, it's, it's not the same conceptualization. It's another way of looking at the same phenomena.